So this is the Galaxy A71 and if you didn't know, this is one of Samsung's best mid-range phones and it's really good for the price. So we have the box right here, this is the phone and it actually looks pretty nice and premium. You also have the 25 watt super fast charging brick here as well as the type C cable and some good old wired earbuds as well. Oh and I almost forgot we also have a clear plastic case here as well as the paperwork and the same ejector tool. Let's start with the build which is pretty interesting. As you can see this one is the prism crush black which I definitely like although it's basically a fingerprint magnet but it looks very nice that you have this cool design as well. It is plastic that's made to look and feel like glass but what I immediately noticed as I first got my hands on this phone is that it's really lightweight and thin for a 2020 phone with great specs. It weighs in at 179 grams and its thickness is only 7.7 millimeters which in my opinion is pretty thin. It has an in-display fingerprint scanner which I was actually excited to use since I've never seen or tried one before and I think that it's cool especially because we only used to see this in flagship phones so I'm very optimistic that we'll see this technology on lower end phones in the upcoming years. Although when I tried this at first, it didn't want to register my fingerprint and it's probably because of the screen protector but all I had to do was to put a little more pressure on the sensor and it worked easily. It keeps the headphone jack, the speaker sounds nice as well, it gets loud and doesn't distort as much in the high volume levels. And of course, you have the quad camera setup at the back which actually sort of resembles its more expensive counterpart which is the Galaxy S20. The specs are the best part about this mid-range device. You have 8GB of RAM and 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage on this model, a dedicated micro SD card slot, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G, 1080p Super AMOLED Plus, Gorilla Glass 3, and a decent 4500mAh battery. The price? Well, it's been a year since this phone was announced and because this is a mid-range phone from Samsung, prices haven't really dropped since its initial launch, at least in our area. It costs around $400 and now you have some competition here like the OnePlus Nord, the iPhone SE, Google Pixel 4, and so on. While this phone may have a few things from those phones that are missing, I think that this is still a great deal. Hear me out. I mean look at this hole punch tiny bezel display at a high 87.2%, easily one of the best if not the best in this mid-range competition, and while it's still 60Hz, if you have a display that's this good, I don't think you need a high refresh rate. Pair that with this loud and good speaker and the media consumption is really good on this one. The color, the detail, and everything about this display is so good. And the phone is fast, 8GB of RAM for this price point is really something that wasn't so possible back then. You can pretty much run any game here and you'll have next to none issues with it. The multitasking is good as well because of this and it can handle a lot of apps and memory. Opening apps, closing apps, and switching through them are very quick as well. The battery life though is on the weaker side here since there's a lot more power draw with these high specs, but you do have the super fast charging brick which I was very impressed with. I plugged it in before 6pm at about 17% and it was at 92% at half past or quarter to 7. Now this is Samsung so you'll get One UI 2.1 which is pretty fine. It has some nice features here like the edge panel and the gesture controls are really good as well. It's not as good as something like iOS, but it's actually a lot closer than I thought. Overall, it's very snappy. And of course, let's look at the cameras. As I said earlier, it's a quad camera setup, and it's also amazing for the price like everything else about this phone. You have a 64 megapixel main sensor at f1.8, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 5 megapixel macro, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor, and you can also shoot videos up to 4K, which is great. The selfie camera is a 32 megapixel sensor at f2.2 and these cameras are as good as you expect them to be. The photos are sharp and vivid, you get a lot of detail because of the high megapixel main camera and you also get good dynamic range and color. The ultra wide is good, the macro is fine and for the depth sensor, it can be useful for taking portrait shots. So that's the Samsung Galaxy A71, I am very impressed at what Samsung has packed into this mid-range price point and hopefully the prices will drop soon. It almost has flagship specs, an amazing display, great features, great cameras, great performance, and a good battery. Definitely looking forward to some more of these phones and I hope that we can get in-display fingerprint scanners on budget phones in the next few years. Anyway, that's been it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 300 subscribers now, so a sub to the channel would be very nice. Stay blue my friends, goodbye.